Shabbat Shalom. Uh, I first want to give a warm welcome to Rabbi Barry Leff, uh, who uh, is visiting the area, um, is currently in Birmingham, Alabama, is that correct? Yes, Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and, uh, hmm? Roll Tide, Roll Tide. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, lives, uh, I think, full-time in Jerusalem. Um, and uh, Barry and I were ordained in the same class, uh, 2002, at the Ziegler School of Rabbinic Studies. Um, spent uh, the year together in Israel and studying together. It's wonderful to have you here, and we say welcome. Um, a, there are many things, obviously, that can be said that have already been said about, um, about the Torah portion. Um, one theme which I just want to, uh, to give over is, um, is the idea of patience. Um, and there are three different teachings about this that I want to share, um, all of them relating to, um, relating to the flood. On the one hand, we can see the act of bringing the flood as the quintessential moment of impatience, that God becomes just impatient with uh, human beings, with all creatures, and decides to destroy the world in a moment of rage. Um, but it's not quite that way. Uh, and I think a plain reading of the Torah shows that. Um, and certainly, the rabbi's approach to the flood um, understands God in a very different way. The first example of this um, comes from Rashi's comment on uh, verse, chapter 6, verse 14, where God gives the commandment, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. And um, on this, Rashi brings the question um, that uh, all, that, that many of us would have anyways. The making of the ark is to take 120 years. People lived a long time those days. And Rashi says, God has, there's a lot of sort of relief and salvation. There are a lot of ways that God knows how to save. New, so why, why do you have to do it by way of an ark that takes 120 years to build? Hey, if you're going to save a group of people, if you're going to save Noah and his family and the animals, why do you have to do it exactly this way? And the rabbis read in this, it says, um, Why did he trouble him with all of this construction? Um, which means the idea was that it would take Noah 120 years to build the ark, and during all of that time, people would come up to him and say, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you building? And he would say, well, I'm, I'm building an ark because God is going to bring a flood because everybody's acting terribly. And maybe through that interaction, people would repent. That there's 120 years of waiting. God makes this process take so long in the hopes that it won't be necessary. In the hopes that people will change, in the hopes that God will be able to not do what God is about to do. That's one rabbinic tradition. Um, a second rabbinic tradition from uh, the Talmud and Sanhedrin, from where we got that other um, most interesting story about the raven, um, says that, and, and it's, actually, there's, it's based on the same verse, um, says that the, uh, why was atse gopher, why was gopher wood chosen for the construction? Um, and the, the answer is um, guff, because the flood actually was not just water in the rabbinic imagination. It was gafrit, um, which is sulfur. And, um, and, and so um, in the rabbinic imagination, according to, uh, to 
to, to the Gemara, the rains were merciful at first. In other words, it's not just that 120 years went along when people could ask, hey, what are you doing, and maybe repent, but even once the flood started, the rains were merciful at first. They were light rains, and then they were great rains, and then finally they became um, not only hot water, but also um, sulfurous, um, which brought about this great destruction. Now, of course, that's not in the Torah itself um, about the sulfur piece, but um, it's an interesting reading of gopher and gafrit, right, of gopher and, and, and sulfur. Um, but again, in the rabbinic imagination, this is something where the rains have even begun, and the hope is that people can change and turn back. Right? And the last proof or the last teaching um, of this idea that is based on um, a verse in the Torah is that when you read the verse of the Torah um, that describes, and this is chapter 7, verse, uh, verse 21, that describes the moment when the rains have already begun and describes the moment when the destruction um, finally takes place, the Torah states as follows in verse 21, and all flesh that stirred on earth perished. Birds, cattle, beasts, and all the things that swarmed on the earth and all mankind. Now, one teaching goes that this corresponds to, if this is the reversal of creation, that we know from the beginning of Breshit Aleph, the beginning of chapter one of the book of Genesis, that human beings are the last to be created, that on the sixth day there are the animals, et cetera, et cetera, and then human beings are the last to be created. Um, and so the reversal happens that way. But according to another understanding of this, according to Rabbeinu Bachya, the reason that human beings are last is so that up until the very moment they would have the chance to repent. So according to the rabbis, rather than this being a moment of rage and a, moment, a momentary quick decision, this is a moment for, that for the rabbis, God is trying over and over and over again to turn away. And to say it's gonna take 120 years, to say I'm gonna start with the light rains, I'm gonna go to the medium rains, then there's going to be the rest of this stuff, and that the first to be destroyed will be the animals, so that maybe, 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 people could change, and all this could be avoided. There is a teaching that I love about uh, the sin of the golden calf, um, the sin of the golden calf, there are a lot of things that went on there, but one of them is that Moshe goes up, I know it's, you know, 10 weeks from now or whatever it is, but I'm jumping forward a, a book. Moshe is going to be up on the mountain and, um, and he's up there and it's supposed to be 40 days and it's not clear if he's supposed to come back on the 40th day or he's going to be up there 40 days and come back on the 41st day. And what happens is the people, it's the 40th day and Moshe doesn't come and they say he must be dead. And so they say, we need a new leader, please build us a calf. And so it's the very, um, the very impatience of the people that leads to that moment. And a nice homiletical reading of this is that the word egel in Hebrew um, means calf. And the word egel in Aramaic, which we know from the Kaddish, when we say ba'agala uvizman kariv, Venomar Amin, Ba'agala means speedily. Uvizman Kariv, and a time, a close time. That Agala has to, that Agal, uh, Agala and Egel has to do with doing things too fast. And I think it's just an interesting observation to think about the relationship between the things moving too quickly and sin or destruction and patience. The importance of patience in the religious personality. Patience in giving people second chances. 
Patience in not judging someone so quickly, but going through a thought process where we ask, what brought this person to act this way? What might be their motivations? So that we can be Don Lechaf Sechut, we can judge people, err on the side of judging them favorably rather than not. Patience is an important thing to cultivate. It's in sore, it is sorely lacking in a world of social media, in a world of instant texting, in a world where sitting down to talk face to face is more of a rarity than anything else. So, in praise of patience shall be the teaching for this Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Please.